Hello, everybody. In this session of the McGuire Tech Service Training Step class, we're going to be covering all the push button operated levelers. In this instance, we have a McGuire hydraulic leveler, we have a McGuire air operated leveler, electrically operated air, and we also have a pneumatically operated leveler through shock air or by a compressor. We'll be going through installation, troubleshooting, and some appropriate maintenance that could be done on all three of them. At this point, I'd like to go through some of the installation corners on this hydraulic McGuire leveler. You can see that we've got four uprights in the back. Underneath those four uprights, shimming is required. Not only do we shim the four uprights in the back, the hoist cylinder area as well is very critical to be shimmed. In the front, we also have what we call the front angle. You can see this is the lip keeper. We shim underneath the lip keepers on both sides. And in this case, we have the maintenance prop area. We also want to put, put a shim underneath that maintenance prop area. When you're installing your shims, as you can see in the center by the hoist cylinder, we do a pyramid stacking method. We use shims that are approximately four inch by four inch. When you do your final welding, make sure you just don't rely on a simple tack to hold that shim in place. You use a four inch shim, try and weld it fully, not only in the back, but in the front as well and the hoist cylinder. Across the rear angle of the frame, where it meets the pit curb steel, that area needs to be welding in accordance to our owner's manual. If you look into the owner's manual, you're going to see that it's a six inch weld, six inch on centers. So depending on the width of your leveler, you're going to have obviously fewer welds on a six foot wide leveler than a six and a half or a seven foot wide. So just pay attention to that when you do your welding, six inch weld, six inch on centers. One thing I also want to point out before you even put the leveler into the pit, it's a really good idea to take your pit dimensions. You take both corners in the rear, both corners in the front. That way you verify your depth so you're not wasting your time putting the leveler in the pit in case it's too shallow. Another good dimension to take is a diagonal dimension. That just assures you that you have a square pit. By having a square pit, it just makes the, the fit up that much better. The particular unit we're looking at now is an MA style air powered leveler by McGuire. Very, very similar frame construction as the hydraulic. It, it's hard to notice, but you still have the same four uprights in the back that need to be shimmed. You don't need to worry about any shimming in the center of this due to the fact that the, the bag itself sets on a very sturdy skid with a number of legs underneath it that support the bag. You still have the shimming areas in the front. This happens to be a little wider front angle configuration. You don't necessarily have to do anything out in this area unless you want to do it for aesthetics. You still need to shim underneath your lip keepers, both areas, and underneath the maintenance prop area. The area that you're going to see here that I'm pointing to is actually the lip keeper. This lip keeper is a little bit different than what we saw in the hydraulic. This is an 18 or 20 inch lip style keeper. In this instance, you're going to need to put a shim behind that lip keeper to the curb steel. And we do that when you have the lip in the keepers and they run over with your fork truck, you don't have a tendency to take this lip keeper and bend it back towards the, the building wall. And if it bends back towards the building wall too much, your chances are that your lip may not store in your keepers again. So it's, it's pretty important if you have an 18 or 20 inch lip to put a shim in behind the lip keeper area. Other than that shimming on this, the back is identical. The top welding of the curb steel to the frame is identical. The front, you still have the lip keepers and the hoist cylinder, or the maintenance prop area. And then in this one, you have a little extra because of the lip keepers. Other than that, it's almost identical to the, your hydraulic style frame. This particular unit we call the CA leveler or central air leveler. The frame configuration, as you can see, is pretty much identical to either the hydraulic or the air powered leveler. The biggest difference you're going to see is where that bellows is mounted. That bellows is mounted to the 
channel frame. That is important to shim underneath where that channel and the bag area meet. Other than that, all the other areas of shimming are identical to the prior two units we talked about. The front is the same. The welding of the rear hinge angle to the curb steel is the same. The biggest difference here is where that cross member is, where that bellow attaches. You need to shim underneath that area. After your installation has been completed, the electricians have done their due diligence installing the control boxes. There's a couple different options for control boxes that you have. You can do a single push button Dan Fox enclosure that we call it. If you want to be a little more advanced and you want to have a restraint with your leveler or a light communication package, you can do an integrated control system powered by IDOT. One other thing that uh, uh, I should mention too is that there are several different voltages available for the McGuire hydraulic level. 115, single phase, 208 single phase, 230 single phase, 233 phase, 2083 phase, and 463 phase. So there's a plethora of, of different voltages available. As far as the maintenance and troubleshooting on this, we have a power pack. On that power pack are three very important features of that power pack. You have an RV1 valve, an RV2 valve, and a sequence valve on the side. I could sit here and tell you what every one of them does, but until you have a problem with it, you're not going to remember it. The best thing to do is refer back to your owner's manual. There are simple little adjustments that you can make an eighth of an inch or eighth of a turn at a time that either can make or break that power pack. Typically, the only time you ever have to touch that power pack is the way this leveler works is as the leveler goes up, it gets close to the end of the stroke of the hoist cylinder, that sequence valve takes over to extend the lift. And that's the point where that RV1 and RV2 and the sequence valve, at times, can become out of sync. The best thing to do if something like that were to happen when you're in the field is either call our tech service department or actually go into the manual. We have a specific section right in the manual that covers the adjustments on that, that power pack. Another thing that you'll see on this one, this happens to have an option as I referred to before, if you wanted to get fancy with a restraint and an integrated control panel. This actually has what we call an optional e-stop and lip-out valve. What that does is as you're controlling the leveler, you barely get it up out of the keepers, just above the truck bed, you hit the lip out valve, the lip is going to open up so you can let it down on your truck bed. What that does is, is takes away the, the disadvantage of having to go through a full cycle to let that lip open. It's, it's kind of like a quick cycle time. The other thing is the e-stop in the combination valve. If you find something you don't like, you slam the e-stop on, it's going to lock the leveler in place right where it is. The only downfall of that is the lip is going to fold. The only thing that's going to happen is the level is going to stay up in the air. So you can clear the obstruction or whatever you found that was necessary to engage the e-stop. Once that is done, simply disengage the e-stop. The level is going to drift back down to the storage position. From a maintenance standpoint of this, I always try and lubricate the hoist cylinder a little bit. There's the trunnion area up on top where the pin goes through. Lubricate that penetrating oil, lubricating oil, something that has a rust inhibitor in it is fine. Lubricate your hinge area, your maintenance prop. Uh, unfortunately, you can't see the underside of the lip, but every lip tube and platform tube has a grease fitting. You can pump grease into there. I like to use a, a grease that contains a, a black molly additive. It's, it's an additive that just prolongs the, the life of the grease. It, it doesn't have, to me, as much moisture content as a, a regular white lithium grease. And a mystic type grease that's used on wheel bearings is way too heavy to do this. So if you can find something that contains a black molly, that's probably the best bet. The uh, hoist cylinder pin down below, I should mention, they should put a little grease on that. Try and get the rear hinge bars as well. The nice thing about this McGuire level they have what's called a uh, free-floating rear hinge, which is very nice. It just kind of free floats no matter where the truck bed tilts to. This is a quick look at the IDOC controller we had talked about before. This is that integrated control system. If you wanted to get fancy, like I said, with a restraint, 
the dock leveler. But not only that, you can add some other features as well. The one feature I talked about was the e-stop. The other feature I talked about was the lip out. Not only can you do those two, you can actually install a dock light and work the dock light from this. You can have your garage door operator incorporated into this control box as well. Open, close, stop. So there's a lot of advantages to the iDock control system. This is the outside. The really nice part about it too is you've got the message display system. And it tells you if you're doing something wrong. Like you have to engage the restraint before the leveler will work and vice versa. The restraint has to be stored before the leveler will work. There's a lot of interlocking we can do with this particular control box. Another feature of this control box is control box, when you turn it off, it has the lockout tag out capabilities. You simply come behind, pull it out. You can insert your lock. Lock it out, take the key, now you're the only one that can get in there. Especially when you're doing service work underneath the leveler, you always want to lock out, tag out. Next I'd like to talk about the MA uh, air powered leveler. The MA air powered leveler is powered by a power pack that's located in the back left corner of the pit, the way I'm looking at it now. The way that you order parts too, I should, should have said that in all of our videos, is you're standing on top of the dock, looking outside, your left is left, your right is right. They never stand in the drive and look into the pit. Always stand on top of the dock and look outside. With that being said, the blower is back in the left-hand section. Blower is rigidly mounted to the frame. It's connected to the bag by a piece of flex tube. Uh, one of the biggest things I see going wrong with that is a lot of pallet material getting dropped down through the frame and maybe puncturing a hole in that tubing that connects the bag to the blower. Uh, we, we, uh, I think the timing of this is probably around 30 seconds from dead in the keepers to full lip extension. So if you arrive to a job site and you, the uh, customer tells you that this leveler is taking an extraordinary amount of time getting up, I would venture to say that you have a hole in the bag. If you can get it up on the maintenance prop, inspect your bag. The area that you're going to look for is the seamed area for some kind of rip or tear, and actually the back area as well. That's basically the, the biggest problem that you're going to have with this type of leveler is something is going to get in there at some point in time and puncture the back. As you can see in the front, just like all the other levelers we talked about, we have our grease fittings throughout lip tubes, platform tubes, our safety legs. They'll be the same on whether you have an MA or a CA style leveler. So you want to make sure, as you heard in the squeaky video, you want to get some lubrication behind those spots. The maintenance prop area, you want to make sure we get some lubrication on those as well. I always try and lift up the bag to inspect anything that might be underneath the skid that could cause you a problem. Make sure that this area is secured the way it should be. This area here, once the airbag lifts the leveler, the actuator opens the lip. This is what we call the lip latch. The lip latch actually holds the lip open until it comes to rest on the truck bed. Once it comes to rest on the truck bed, you no longer, no, no longer have the spring tension on it, she falls back to a neutral position. Along with that lip latch, we have a lip assist area as well. What that does along with the, the actuator, or they call it the lip bangers, is as that leveler comes up and starts to open the lip, the spring is in compression. It adds in helping the lip come to full extension. This also has the lip maintenance prop. There's also a grease fitting underneath here as well. This area here should be lubricated. That you won't have to worry about it as a grease fitting. I lightly oil the spring from time to time just so it doesn't rust and corrode that far. As you walk the lip down, there's a pull ring in the top which you actuate, causing the blow dock end load. This has an option that's called a rubber 
rubber bumper, it should dampen the lip from making a loud noise when it collapses. Some of the other features, you got the lip assist, lip latch, your safety legs, and then this is the lip actuator, they call it the lip banger. From an installation standpoint, it's identical to what we had with the hydraulic and what I'm going to point out to you at the CA level. Maintenance standpoint, as I said, always check your bag. If you think you have a leak, check the blower too. The blower itself has a, a filter screen on the front of it. Take that out, blow it out, vacuum it out, clean it. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the CA or Central Air Style Levelers. As you can see, it's a simple push button control box that's air actuated. We have the air supply down below by a regulator and lubricator, which comes from either your plant supplied air or an air compressor that we can supply for you. The air lines simply go down through the pit into your leveler, or they may have to go outside to your leveler. The structure underneath this particular leveler is no different than the MA leveler. It's got the same frame structure, the same platform structure, so as far as maintenance on that goes, all the components that I'm pointing out are identical to what we just went through. Same maintenance props, everything. The biggest difference in this is the airbag. It's a big air bellows, very robust, not very easily punctured. Behind that is the valve actuator that actuates the leveler. The nice thing about the valve, I don't want to say that this leveler is simple stupid, but it kind of is. They either work or they don't. And very, very rarely do we ever have a valve that goes bad, or a bellows that goes bad, or a control box. This is probably one of the nicest levelers, air operated type, that I think is made. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today in the technical installation, operation, and some maintenance troubleshooting clips that we have on the McGuire push button operated pit style levelers. Once again, if you have any issues that arise, feel free to contract your local McGuire dealer. And if you have installation issues or mechanical issues, feel free to call our tech service.